Hello, today we're going to look at the history of the periodic table and how it came to be as it is today. Now, the majority of the work really started in the early 1800s where elements were starting to be discovered and scientists were looking for a way to group them and classify them in order to learn more about chemistry. Now, around about 1860, so we're going past the middle of the uh, century there, there was a table of atomic weights that were published and these were found out by various experiments that were done. So one way to group the elements was done by grouping them by atomic weights. Soon after that was done, there was a scientist called John Newlands who discovered that about every eighth element, there were similar properties with that element. So you could put them in order of atomic weights, but you could also see similarities with every eighth element. At that time, there were about 50 elements that had been discovered. And as we know nowadays, there's over a hundred elements. So the early periodic tables were in order of atomic weights and grouped in eights. And Newlands, John Newlands, in around about 1864, was the person who did that. Now let's just take a quick look at a diagram of his table. So we've got the atomic weights in order there. So you can go through the table and see they're in order of atomic weights. There were some that had similar atomic weights and they were put in a similar place. Um, because of their similar atomic weights. But what we also noticed is that every eighth element had similar properties. So lithium, sodium, potassium there had similar properties. But there was a problem when you got to copper. But because that was the next one on the atomic weight list, it was put in that particular group. Rubidium fits, but copper does not. Copper, however, was left in that group because of the fact that it had an atomic weight that fitted in that group and while it didn't have two similar reactions it was actually a metal so it was thought just to kind of leave it there okay so that group amongst others had similar reactions and similar properties and that table gives you an idea of or that slide gives you an idea what the table looked at looked like at the time so after newlands about five years later there was another scientist he was a russian and his name was dmitry mendeleev and he is generally known as the person who developed the modern periodic table what he did that was slightly different was that he grouped the elements by their atomic weight but he left gaps because he thought there were going to there were undiscovered elements that would fit in those gaps whereas newlands or people before just forced them into a group somewhere he left gaps uh, to say because he thought there was going to be the elements discovered and at that time elements were being discovered about once every year so it was a reasonable um, a prediction or assumption to make what he also did though he predicted the properties of those undiscovered elements so where the gaps were he looked at the elements around it and made predictions of the element that would fit in those gaps the other thing is that when those elements were actually finally discovered he was found to be correct in terms of the properties or very close or close enough to the properties and that gave a lot of credibility to his ideas about the periodic table. What he also did was he didn't always stick to the order of the atomic weights. So if properties didn't fit that pattern, he switched one or two of them around because he thought the properties were more important sometimes than the order of atomic weights. The reason why the atomic weight order didn't always work was because they hadn't discovered isotopes yet. And as we know, isotopes can affect the atomic mass. So that variation that couldn't be explained was because of the existence of isotopes. Also important to remember that around about 19, uh, 1920s, that's when protons were discovered. So it's quite a long time afterwards, but when the protons were discovered, elements were placed in the order of proton number. And that took into account the isotopes. So here's a, a small section of the modern periodic table. Let's take an example of that group there, group seven. And if you go down the group, you can see that those four elements have very similar properties and kind of belong in the same group. But if you put them in, or, in order of atomic masses, you can see that the iodine, the I, is not in the correct group. If we then just expose or show the proton numbers, the atomic numbers, you can see there that that bottom row the atomic number goes 49, 50, 51, 53, and 52. So those are in the wrong order. We can switch those around. We can put terillium in the group before. And now the iodine is actually in the correct group for its properties and the pattern that it shows.
So it just showed that the atomic number was the more important way to order the elements in the periodic table. And as you go down that group there, we had the correct pattern and the correct properties for those elements. We can see here that it doesn't strictly follow the order of atomic masses. And again, that's because of the existence of isotopes. Okay, so this is a run through of the history of the periodic table. You should be able to describe the steps in its uh, development over the years from the early 1800s and the key points that we've gone over just now. But just to help reinforce that, it's probably worth doing a quick summary of the main points. So we've got the history of the periodic table is what we're looking at. And we're just going to outline the key points. If you want to, you can pause at the end of this little summary and just make a little copy of this yourself. But if not, let's just go through uh, what we talked about briefly, just over a minute or so. Okay, so we have initially the work being done on the periodic table, and the work was all based around the idea of atomic weights. It started about 1800s, but mid-1800s atomic weights were published, and scientists then grouped the elements based on those atomic weights. Doing that, though, meant some elements did not fit groups. We found patterns in every eighth element, but some of those elements didn't fit the groups. We then had, around about 1869, Dmitry Mendeleev, a Russian scientist. He left gaps in the periodic table based on what he thought were elements that had not been discovered yet. He predicted their properties, and he was found out to be correct when they were discovered. That lent a lot of credibility to his ideas. The atomic weight order at that time wasn't always necessar necessarily right because we hadn't actually discovered or didn't weren't aware sorry of the isotopes. In the 1920s we had the discovery of the proton and now elements are placed in order of proton number in the periodic table. Important to point out these highlights highlighted bits now that when we have scientists who predict make certain predictions and then observations prove them to be correct, that gives a lot of credibility to those ideas and supports a science idea. And we've come across that a couple of times so far in our videos. So that's it for me for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.